What's going on guys and welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Where last time we started our tiny little starter factory, which is just producing our iron plates, our rods, our screws, all to make reinforced plates and rotors. But in today's episode, I want to turn this little copper thing we've got under here, I don't have a clue what it is, into this. But also, we're going to add coal because we don't want to use biomass anymore. But also, if you're enjoying these videos, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you're not subscribed and leave a comment, even if it's just an emoji, to help me fight the algorithm. So without further ado, the first thing I want to unlock today is I want to unlock Logistics Mark II. So we're going to put all of these in here. Get this sent off. Bada bing, bada bosh. Which means we can now use Conveyor Mark IIs, which transport 120 items per minute. Oh, you also got a Conveyor Lift Mark II as well. Which means I can finally come up to this rotor machine because it is required to have 100 screws per minute. And we've only just unlocked Mark II belts. So I need to come over to the screw belt here, which is the right hand side. Upgrade this belt to a Mark II because it's going to carry 120 now. And upgrade that down there. That... And then this lift as well. And this one right here. And then, because this is a 60 belt, that's a 60 belt right there, merging together to now produce 120. The screws are now going up, which means that rotor building, well, the rotor um, assembler is now going to be efficient. And then I'm going to go back to the hub and then actually unlock jump pads. So we're just going to put these in here, send that off. And jump pads allow me to get around the base a little bit more quicker if i wanted to or get to different levels but also gives me a safe place to land in some jelly pad so the first project i want to work on today is working on the copper so first let's lay down the foundation and bada bing bada boom like magic it's down okay as you can see we've already put the miner down and the lift and yes we are sitting on a pure node so it's going to be providing 120 per minute so as we know, with one smelter with the copper recipe, it's going to consume 30 iron ore per minute, which means we need four altogether because obviously four times 30 is 120 and we are bringing 120 in. So let's go and grab ourselves a smelter and let's place this down, say, um, say about here, like that. And then we'll place one every other foundation. Let's keep everything nice and clean, nice and tidy as we do. And then we're going to grab ourselves a constructor and we're going to place this here. And we're going to put uh, five of these in a row. But I'm going to flip the last one around. Uh, because as we know, if we go into here and look at the, uh, the wire recipe, this needs 15 ingots per minute. We're actually bringing 60 down out of these two into this line. And obviously that goes into four constructors. And it's going to produce 30 wire. All these producing 30 wire. So that's going to be 120. But I want this one to actually make cable. So that's going to require 60 wire as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down the mergers here to merge these four together. And then this one's going to have a splitter on the end. Well, technically a smart splitter. Uh, and that smart splitter is going to send um, any overflow down this way. But also send copper wire into this machine to make cable. So that means 60 wire should end up coming out this side with uh, cable coming down this side and we can put them into storage. So like I said, we've got the spine on this left hand side, the spine on the right hand side. This right here is sending 120 copper wire down and so is this. 60 is going into this constructor to make cable. 60 is going to come out. I didn't put smart splitters in the end because there was no need. 60 is going to go that way. 60 is going to go that way anyway. Does not matter. And now I want to put this splitters on the input side of the constructors i'm going to want to put four of these down all together we don't need to do a smart splitter at the end because all the uh copper ingots are going to get consumed anyway so there should be none excess and oh we're not actually going to get a 90 degree turn here uh let's just jump up here let's grab this smelter and if we shift that um maybe to there shift it over by one Grab ourselves a merger and then put that to there. That allows us to then get a 90 degree turn into that. And then you're going to come down there. I don't need it. We don't even need a mer Oh, yeah, we do. What am I talking about? Let me... <laughs> I've just come fuzzled myself. I need a merger here, sorry. A merger there. And then I can bring that into there. So we're just going to bring you to there. And oh my God, I can't even get belts right. See, we all make mistakes. Put you into there, you into there, mark one into there, 
And then we are sending 60 down here, right? So it needs to be on Mark 1 into here as well. And there we go. And then I need to put Mark 1s going straight all the way down here. And then on the inputs as well. So, bada bing, bada boom. That is that done. Um, and we just need to duplicate that on the opposite side. Um, but what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to go into my architecture. And you saw this in the tips and tricks. Um, I'm actually, I like to dedicate like zones. So I'm going to bring this barrier up here because this is where my corn is going to be. Uh, and I'm going to grab myself the metal pillar. I'm just going to snap that to the... Like I said, it's in the tips and tricks video. If you want to see that, check up in the top right and corner now. If you're probably watching this channel anyway, you're probably seeing it. I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. Uh, and then we're just going to bring this all the way around here like this. And we're just going to cover the whole thing and just go around with it. And as you know, I'm not a person that does, doesn't mind clipping as long as it's not a moving item going through a solid item. So if a belt's going through a rock or going through a machine, it's different. Unless it's got aesthetic purposes that allows it or makes it look like it does. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to bring the a lift here and a lift here uh, to actually bring the copper down. And then, obviously, six, uh, the copper, the copper wire, and then the copper wire is going into there. So that means 60 is going down there. But I'm going to actually clip this through there because it's a solid item, you know. It's not a moving item with a solid item, so it doesn't look crazy. So that kind of thing I allow. And we're actually going to bring a conveyor hole here. And then we're going to send the actual copper wire underground. And then we're going to work on the uh, underfloor in logistics. So I'm going to put this all the way around here, kind of like a trim. And it kind of... Um, creates its own little designated zone as well. And there we go. The whole thing has now got a trim around it. But also, if we go underneath, I've added the ore. The ore has now got a little, of, uh, little bit of a belt going on here. And we've connected that up to the uh, the splitters underneath here, going into the smelters. I have connected the, uh, the power cables up because, you know, power cables are tedious. You don't need to see that. Um, but what I want to do now is because this right here is the... Um, cable and that's the cable uh, these two are the 60 uh, wire that's coming down the center and i want to look at putting in some, some storage and the only thing i'm thinking about is putting something down here um so and what i'm thinking about doing is maybe bringing the foundation out like this um like that and then um kind of like making a hole here um, and then just grabbing ourselves a... Wait, how many are we going to do? Four? I think it's four. If we can get... Yeah, let's do two cable and two two wire. Um, and then we can just put them under here like this. So if we just go into organization and grab some storage. We can just put this down, say, there. Like that. So cable, wire, wire, cable. And then we don't have window walls yet, do we? We don't. Because what my intention is, is is to have window walls going across here. Uh, obviously, these bits will be cut out. And then have our items coming on the outside like this. Um, so I think just for now, we'll leave it like that. Even though I've just said about my solids coming through a belt. Uh, like my clipping thing, I'd have said. Um, but I'll get some windows for that and put that in there. Um, so yeah, let's now connect them up with these and see how it looks and there we go we have now got things moving and you're going to see a little bit more things that we've added additionally so as you can see this is the cables and the wires coming down and the smart splitters you can see here are actually diverting where they want to go but when the storage gets full they are then being overflowed down these belts and then to go into the resource sinks so this is actually the first factory we're actually going to be having some full automa automation in there and creating nothing that's going to back up as well because that's what the sinks purpose is going to do and to give us coupons because we are going to need them so if you ever want to watch these where i build it belt by belt and splitter by splitter and assembler by constructor and smelter by sink all that kind of stuff go over to my second channel you can see the vod of literally how i did it all on the live stream so now that we partially set up the copper building we're having a bit of a problem with power uh, as we can see we are consuming 209 megawatts and that's without the sinks running yet because 
there's no overflow being sent because the storages are being filled. But this is going to go up as soon as them kick in. And we live a max consumption of 286 megawatts. So what I'm going to do, and then if we go over to our hub, we can now see tier three and four unlocked. And we've got the option to go into coal power, vehicular transport, basic steel production, advanced steel production, improved melee combat, hyper tubes, and logistics march three. So I want to work on tier three at the minute because I want to unlock coal power. And that right here is, we've got actually enough room for it. It's going to give us the coal generator, the water extractors, pipes. And as you, as we know in the uh, first uh, episode, I wanted to pre-build the copper sheets that we're going to need to make for the pipes, which we've already started doing. And we've got pump marked ones, which are going to require rotors and fluid buffers and scanner. So we can look for coal on the map. So let's send that off and let's go and find ourselves a good coal location so i'm i'm just coming out the maze right now because on this side of the map over here there's quite a few coal nodes there's some impures some normals and a, a pure as well um so if we have a look around here where are they uh, there's a couple right there they're the impure i believe um and then if we look over this side there should be two over here next to them little nests of the bees and there should be one pure one normal and then the one normal, we're going to mix it with the two impure to make a 120 line. And then we'll get the pure to be... Oh, am I... What the... Hello? What is going on with my ankle? Jesus. Um, But yeah. So, yes, again, we need to lay down the foundation. And you guys get to miss that because it's the point of seeing me put foundation down. It's boring. All right? So, three, two, one. And there we go. The platform is down. I've even connected up the two impure nodes here to merge into a 60 line. And then over here, we've got a normal line and we've also got a pure. The normal is going to mix with the two impure to make the 120, like I said before. And the pure is just going to be a pure node. Okay, so the next thing I want to do now is I want to start putting the coal generators down. So let's get one of these. The good old big boys. And then we're going to place this about here. And then we should be able to put down eight here in a row. Because as you can tell on my shopping list... Uh, it's not allowing me to snap that for a reason. For some reason, I don't know why. As I put these down manually, it's not allowing me to control snap them. So now we've done that, we need to do it on this side as well. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to put down our conveyor holes uh, here in front of all of these uh, inputs, just like that. And then I'm going to remove this flooring right here. And then I want to put the belts down, but I'm going to put the belt, uh, the lift down first, sorry, and then put the splitter because I'm going to show you a neat little trick here. So if you put that down there, that's not technically connected, even though I put that there. So I need to reconnect this one. But what it's doing is allow me to align where my belt is now going to clip. But then if we grab the splitter and aim at these shadows here on the ground, um, it would actually be the correct location where the next lift's going to go. So if we just put all of these down on the shadows and make sure it snaps to the the grid of the uh, the other splitter will know everything is lined up perfectly and then we just need to grab our lifts and then go down from each of each of all of these and then just snap them all up okay so there you go as you can see i've now added the right side as well which does mean that the other side has been completed when we just did that one uh we've now brought these lines in here and we've got this 60 line right here because uh them two or or extractors over there them two miners are actually only bringing in 30 per each one because they're in impure lines. So that is now coming down here, mixing with this medium node right here, uh, this normal node, sorry, uh, making 120 on that side, the pure node making 120 on that side. Next, what I want to show you is how to do the water extractors. Not a lot of people know how to do this um, because most people just grab the water extractors and then actually just place it down like this and try to line it up correctly. Uh, as you can see, trying to line it up with this foundation and the problem you're going to have with it is when you go down to put a, a pipe or anything, it's going to be a little wonky or all that kind of stuff. Here's a little trick if you don't know uh, about it. Just grab yourself a foundation uh, and then just bring this across like this, but underneath the water. Once you do this, what you're going to do, what this is going to allow you to do, I should say, is brings the water extractor actually onto your grid you're building on. So as you can see, it's now snapped to that building. That's where originally it was aiming. If you bring it here, it's now snapped to the grid as well. So I can just bring this up to there, just like that. And then I can get my water pipe and do what I was going to do. And it should come right into the middle of there. And it's a nice straight pipe. 
The next thing I need to do is figure out the junctions that we want to spread these pipes on. But we have a bit of a dilemma and people are wondering, you're using the water extractor here for to feed these eight? No, 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 no. What we're going to do, this one water extractor is actually going to power six. And the reason it's going to power six is because we're going to overclock this to actually give us 300 cubic meters of water per minute, which is then going to go into four because each coal generator requires 45 cubic meters, leaving two not being powered by water. So this is where the extra uh, water extractor is going to, begin, uh, going to come in. We're going to put one here, one here. This one's going to feed that side. And then this one in the center is going to run straight down the middle here. It's going to split off here into two more pipes. We're going to put a junction here, split off here, and it's going to feed that one, that one, that one, and that one. So that one in the middle is only going to feed four, where the other, feed, other ones are going to feed six. So that is the plan for that. So to figure out the line for this, we're just going to bring this over here like this. And I think putting it onto that line might be all right. And then I'm just going to grab the pipe, press R, make sure it's set to vertical. And then I'm just going to bring you to there, just like that. And we can see it's a little bit wonky. So I just need to grab this and then just push it out by one more notch. And then we should be able to connect it up just like that. And now we have that lined up. Now I just need to do this for the rest of them and then get all that sorted. And then uh, I'm going to paint these blue. But if you noticed, when I were building that, there was automatically coming blue. Because most people don't realize is if you go into here, uh, and you can see I've got the pipe as blue, right? If I was to set it as this one and then right click on it and then choose this to be pipes, that's now the default color for pipes. So whenever I build a pipe, it's going to be black. All right? Bob's your uncle. <laughs> right, let me finish this up and then we'll start working on trying to get all this powered because we need to put down some like biomass burners to jumpstart this. And there we go. That is now all the pipes underneath completed. Okay, so what I need to do now is I actually need to jumpstart these and I want, it the, I want a couple of them to actually power the rest of them. So what I'm going to do is this water extractor right here is linked to this first six right here. So if we come downstairs and let's say disconnect that wire and then disconnect. Um, so that's connected to there. That's connected to these six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Disconnect that wire there, and then bring this cable here. Connect it to that cable, and remove that one. That creates its own little grid. So that water extractor, and these um, six coal generators above us, and the two miners over there should be the only things that get powered uh, in a second. So what I want to do now is I want to put a couple of foundations down because we need to jump start this, right? And the only way we can really jump start this is by putting down a couple of biomass burners. And because that water extractor is overclocked and it, the default power is only 20 megawatts, um, this should actually be probably getting consuming maybe about 80 megawatts after, uh, after it's been booted up. So let's put down a couple of these. These are going to be providing uh, 30 megawatts each. Uh, if you look in here, 30 megawatts. So if we put one, two, three, if we put maybe about five of these down, I would think we'll be fine. Uh, and if we just go into our inventory here and right click on our solid biofuel, we can actually split that down into four. So let's just put you into there. Let's get you split you again and then put you in there. And then once we power all this up, all the thing we need to do is just wait for the coal to actually come down the line, which could take some time. But not as much as what the uh, Mark 1 is, because that's going to take a little bit longer where this one shouldn't. Um, okay, so let's get these all powered. Doesn't matter about cleanliness for these. They're going to get removed in a second anyway. Um, so let's connect, sign you up to that one, you up to that one. And then we can connect you to this pine line right here. So that water extractor, as we can see, is now powered. And I do want to check the how much is that, this is actually going to consume now. Um, yeah, 86.6. So it's roughly in the ballpark, as I was saying anyway. Uh, that's because we're overclocking. You shouldn't really overclock water extractors, but because we are doing a, you know, uh, infinite power, um, power shard run um, and spawning in the hard drives, I don't mind because we're going to be building a lot of power later anyway once we get further in the uh, series 
So now we just need to wait for the coal. And that's going to take some time. Take a lot of time. So I'm just going to sit here, probably drink a coffee, and I'll be right back. Oh, and 10 minutes later, the coal is finally arriving. So it should go up here, but it's gonna, it should end up stopping. Um, but it should go up to this one, and we should start to receive some decent power. Finally, because each coal machine is going to provide us with 75 megawatts of power. Um, so now it's just a matter of just waiting for this coal to actually uh, come in here. And there we have it, our first couple of uh, coal plants now starting to give us some power. So we just need to wait for this manifold line to kind of push its way through. And then this should be a nice straight line. And once we've got that and we're making a, a, a good chunk of power here, I'm going to reconnect these lines back up to these other water extractors and up to these generators and power them and miners over there. So we can actually uh, remove these biomass generators and then this will be self-sufficient. Then all we need to do is just take a power cable from here back to the base to give us 1,800 megawatts, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, eight times... No, no. 16, 16 times 75. 1,200, I was wrong. That I'm thinking of three lines. <laughs> anyway, let's connect the power up and let's take it over to the base. All right, so before I connect this up back up to the main grid, we can see that we're sitting on a nice 1,200 megawatts being uh, produced. So if we just connect this up to the main grid now, we'll need to power it back up because obviously I've just run out of power. So let's just click that. Uh oh there we go <laughs> so now we can see that production is 1200 and we can see things are back up and running again um if i'm not mistaken all of these should be running inside here now these sinks there we go yeah all of this is now catching back up uh and yeah we're pretty good now we've got a couple more things we need to do is i want to actually go and remove the biomass burners so let's get all of these out the way. And you, and you, and you, and yes, you. Uh, we can even remove them. I want to make sure that everything is still powered. And I think I might, maybe, unless this is connected over there. Yeah, that's still connected. Um, and we can now go underneath the base and remove this copper plant from underneath here. Because technically, it was part of our starter, very first beginning of the episode one. So let's remove all of this. And there we go. The copper has now been removed. The next thing I'm going to want is some modern walkways. So let's purchase these from the awesome shop. That is because, because we have this small setup here, which is producing copper sheets. But what makes more sense is actually adding it to the copper building itself. So as you can see to the northwest of the actual building, there's a copper node just up here next, next to the oasis. And this right here is a pure node. So back in the copper building, as you can see right here, from this location, I'm actually going to bring a one meter foundation um, and just zoop that out right here. And once we get to enough distance, I want to make a curve that's going to go around here and go over there. And how we're going to do that, it was in my um, tips and tricks guide that I've just released recently. Um, I'm hoping I've released it by the time this episode goes out. I think I have. Um, but let's put that there. And then we just put this here like that. Hold control on that. Turn that by one, uh, one uh, five degree. And then put another one here. Put that into that corner. Remove these. Remove that. And then add that underneath there just like this. So that creates like a small curve. I'll show you again. So let's put that there. Put that there. Hold one on top. Turn it by five degrees. It should automatically be set once you hold control. Put this in this corner. Place that there and then just remove these like this. Unlike that. And then just add another one under there. And then eventually that will go around nice and smooth into that copper. Hopefully. But if we go into the materials, I'm going to turn all these to asphalt. So we don't actually see any Z fighting, which is going to be minimum of anyway. And then, yeah, so let's turn all that around there and let's bring over the copper. And there we go. The copper is now up, powered. And yes, I've even put some legs on there just for some supports. It then runs underneath here, which then goes onto the underflooring, which comes across splitters, goes into these two smelters. These two smelters have been set to 200% uh, clock speed, so we don't have to put four more smelters down. We're going to put two down. So then the three 
constructors on either each side can take in the required ingots. And then, yep, as you guessed it, we added it to the storage as well. So that means in this copper facility now, we're making the wire cable and copper sheets uh, and it's all being sunk afterwards as well so now we can just leave this running so we can actually pick some up whenever and it's just going to make us coupons when the storage is full so you must be wondering what is next and that is this right here we're going to clean it this up and we're going to turn this into this so make sure to tune in next episode where we'll be building this and doubling our iron production so make sure to check out all of these other content right here and uh, check out my second channel and as always keep smiling and i'll see you in another video